Fail early, fail often, fail forward. You have to actually seek failure. Failure is where all of the lessons are. You gotta take a shot. You have to live at the edge of your capabilities. You gotta live where you're almost certain you're gonna fail. Successful people fail a lot. They fail a whole lot more than they succeed, but they extract the lessons from the failure and they use that the energy and they use the wisdom to come around to the next phase of success. And within that war, we have several battles. Those battles are basically choices. This practice is controlled failure. You're getting to your limit, getting to your limit, getting to your limit. I'm talking about a war that's in your brain. That war exists because life has so many choices. Within those choices, you gotta make right decisions. So guess what? When you fail, one person to blame is yourself. And recognizing that one of the best things we can do for everyone, reminding them that it's true, that being happy is the best way to elicit change. If you haven't made it fun, if you haven't made it cool, why would anyone take the curriculum from your school on how to live life? I would think twice from listening to the person who goes back home and hates their job and hates their relationship and really wants to get out of everything that they did for the last 10 years but hasn't yet found the strength within themselves to do it. See, we think our mind's job is to make us happy. It really isn't. It's to make us survive. And how we survive is every time we say something that would kill me, I'd die if that happened, the mind goes on red alert to stop it happening because your mind will always remember what hurts you because its job is to keep you alive by making sure you don't get hurt. But it doesn't know what hurts you until you say, that last boyfriend broke my heart, shredded it to pieces and jumped on it. But we tell ourselves all this crazy stuff and then wonder why we feel so crazy when all we have to do is tell ourselves better stuff. Your awareness is like a flashlight. You can direct your awareness to wherever you want. Right now, most of us are shining the flashlight of our awareness on what could happen. When is all this going to end? What will happen to my job? How about my finances? What about my loved ones? Will I become sick? So we're shining the flashlight of our awareness on all of the things that could happen. You have a way out. Shine the flashlight of your awareness on what can I do right now? What is it that lies at hand and what can I do? We know that you grow in strength in proportion to your willingness to voluntarily confront sequential challenges. Okay, so we know that if you optimally challenge yourself, you develop. And then the question is, well, what do you develop into? And the answer to that is something like, well, you develop into what you could be. And the question is, well, what could you be? The answer to that is something like, well, you could be the full revelation of your potential. At any given moment, there could be calamity or tragedy. What I can't see, the unknown, is fear in me. Because we project into the unknown based on our past experience. And so if you've walked through the world fearing this, then you're going to project into the unknown fearing that. Life is C between B and D. Life is the C between B and D. E stands for birth and D stands for death. C is choice. That right now, difficult times that we are facing right now, these difficult times can, uh, they could diminish you, they could define you. These difficult times uh, can defeat
teach you or these difficult times can develop you. You decide. We always have choice and decision. If the background of life is, is there's, a, there's an ineradicable component of suffering and that's complicated by, let's say, malevolence and the proclivity of people to betray themselves and others, which, which complicates it and makes it worse. If you don't have a noble aim and, and, and if that isn't imbuing your life with sustainable meaning, then you fall prey to all the catastrophe, the pain and the anxiety and the anger that that suffering generates and that makes you bitter. It's our words that really affect our reality, partly because, and it's such an easy thing to say, every word you say is a blueprint that your mind, body and psyche are working to make your reality. This happened to you, it wasn't good. This happened to you, it wasn't good. This happened to you, it wasn't good. Fix it, fix it, fix it, fix it. That will never go away unless you fix it. How was it that that situation rose to pull you down? But, you, but if you face it, and you, and you meditate on it, let's say, and, so, and you do this voluntarily, there's a pretty high probability that you'll be able to decrease the probability that will be repeated in the future. We are going through a metamorphosis, a change, a transformation. Had you come out of this cocoon stronger? Had you come out of this cocoon better? Had you come out of this cocoon uh, smarter, also wiser? I recognize that in yours, life doesn't give you anything that you aren't strong enough to overcome, strong enough to turn your pain into your purpose and become the one that can have a unique message that goes out to an audience that is uniquely yours, who wants to hear your voice, wants to see the choice that you made to overcome the same types of behavior that they experienced so they don't feel so alone. You are who you've been looking for. So stop looking for more unless you're looking in a mirror because it's about time for you to see clearly that you are who you've been looking for. You see, we live in a consumerist society which means they need you to buy stuff. And the easiest way to sell it is to tell you you're not enough. Treat yourself like someone you love. Treat yourself like someone you love. You are already enough. So start today. Take a good long look in the mirror and say, I am who I've been looking for. Thank you.